Morning Superstars. So another dressage explained on its way. I just wanted to say one thing. I did a video last week about collecting the canter and thank you so much for being so honest. I've been reading all of your comments and the overwhelming consensus is, is that you guys understood what I was trying to say, but what I didn't make clear is what the actual button was to change the stride from small to big to normal, from five to four to 10, as an example. So I've been racking my brain all week how I can actually articulate that to you. And what I've done is I've gone and bought this little visor camera that sits on my helmet so that you can see what I'm doing with my hands. And I think I've really worked out how to articulate that to you perfectly. But it's gonna require a little bit of clever camera work and um, something I haven't done before. So you need to give me about a week or so to prep that. But I hear you, I understand what you're wanting and I'm 100% gonna make that happen. So I'm really excited. So thank you for being honest. Thank you for telling me what it is you really, really need, which I'm hearing you is not just what collecting, collector canner is, not just that it is smaller strides or bigger strides, what the physical button is to change it from four, five or 10 strides. I can articulate that to you and I'm going to. So next week, stay tuned, that's gonna be in there. Okay, so Kat Evans. Kat Evans has a really great question. It's basically about how you use your leg. And she's saying that, you know, when she uses her leg, that often the, the, she uses her spur or her heel and that she's heard about people saying, use your calf muscle. And, but when she uses her calf muscle, she finds it's not precise and it just doesn't work actually. Guys, this is a really, really common question. And I've had a really good think about how to answer it because it would be really simple just to give you a sort of textbook um, throwaway answer, but it isn't as simple as that. So let me, let me get into that a little bit for you. Basically, and I had to really think about that then because I really want to make sure I get this out right. There's two forms of legs at, leg aids in riding, and this is how I think about it, okay? So you have a leg aid that says go forward, but the thing I'd like to really make clear there is it said it reminds a horse to go forward. It doesn't tell the horse to go forward all of the time. Okay, so I'll get back to that, but that's the first aid. And then the second aid is move away from my leg. And actually there's a third as well, which is ignite this certain leg. Okay, so three times or three ways that your legs work. Move forward, go away from it, go away off it, and use this leg to ignite, okay? So let's look at the first one first. So when your horse travels, walk, trot, canter, we want them to travel by themselves, okay? So we want them to travel in a way that we're not needing to say to them constantly, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 99% of horses are on the side of we don't want to go. Very, very few are truly overtly forward, okay? So a really good word, well, rule of thumb is if you have a lazy horse, you need to use less leg. If you have a really forward horse, you need to use more leg. Now that might in your brain go, whoa, what do you mean, Alicia? That does not make sense. Let me explain it. Imagine yourself doing a Grand Prix dressage test. Imagine yourself doing a pirouette. Imagine yourself even doing a simple half pass. How much harder is that if you also have to say, keep trotting, keep cantering, keep going? It's not really possible, is it? So when you've got a lazier horse or a horse that doesn't go, your leg aid needs to be very electric, very sharp, very quick, and very corrective. So it's very much, I put my leg on, you go. If you don't, it's quick, 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 and then I leave you alone. So you only use your leg when he dies off, when he starts to go slow away from you again instead of powering off in front of you. And when he does come against you, you don't hold your leg on or give him a gentle prod. You say very sharply and assertively, so think electric, think annoyance, think quick. You say, no, 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 keep going. No, 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 
keep going. And as soon as he responds and goes, you take your leg off and leave him alone. You're just passive. And as soon as he comes back again, no, 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 keep going. No, 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 keep going. You might even need to go for a little canter or a little mini gallop, or not a gallop, but a big canter in the arena when he really does back off to say, no, 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 I, I do mean go. But then when he goes, you leave him alone. And that's what we would call, technically, in front of our leg. Okay, so that's leg aid one, and that gives you the ability for him to feel that your leg aids are a little electric, that they are a little bit, hey, I'm waiting for you to do something, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna move away from it, versus you constantly going, go, 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 go. If you've got a horse that is really forward and he's running away from you, the opposite happens. We tend to want to take our legs off and don't touch his sides because if he go, if you touch his sides, he's going to go. Same sort of thing happens in a backward way. If you take your legs off in that moment, they're just bolting off on their forehand. So in those sorts of horses, which I have to say are few and far between, but on those sorts of horses, we need to have our legs in constant contact with the horse just so that he's accepting the leg and that he's not running away from it. And you say to me then, but at least he runs away from it when I put my leg on. If that happens, you can use downward transitions. So where a horse that, um, that doesn't respond to the leg, you might use an upward transition and say, can't I go away? With a horse that runs away, you keep your legs wrapped around him. When he says, I'm gonna bolt away even more, you say, walk transition. If you can't walk transition, you turn a circle until he walks. And every time you feel that he runs away on you, you walk or turn a circle and walk. So again, it's just that corrective thing that says, this is how I want you to behave by yourself all of the time. Okay? So that is the way of going in front of your leg, so to speak, or with you. The next part is that you want them to say leg yield a little bit. That if you put your inside leg on, you want them to move away from it a little bit. Again, the idea is, is that it's quite reactive. That you don't have to support him with your leg. That you say in a little electric way, go off, go off, go off. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And it doesn't matter if he only goes by himself for half a step, an eighth of a step, a quarter of a step. But as soon as he then backs off to that, over, that sideways motion, you go again, again, again. For a horse that is even forward moving, it's the same thing. The idea is, is that the horse is almost in self-balance with your leg so that you're not needing to prop him up with your leg or hold him with your leg. Your leg should be passive and then come in. Passive and then come in. Passive and then come in in a reactive, corrective way, not constant, okay? The last section of your leg is when you say you want to do maybe a flying change or a walk to canter or even a canter or a trot, for example. So you're in walk, you need to say trot. Sure, your seat's involved, but with your legs, it's two legs, trot. Then your legs go passive again. For canter, your outside leg goes behind the girth and says canter, but one, one. As an outside hind leg comes through, once, boom, boom. Not hold. Okay, I hope that made sense to you. I hope that helped. The answer is make it electric, make it quick. Make it that you're saying, I want you to go here, good boy. I want you to go here, good boy. Thank you so much for this, guys. I really, really enjoyed it. I love talking to you. I love answering your questions. Please keep them coming. Comment below any further questions. And remember, guys, subscribe. The more you subscribe, the more I can do these videos and the bigger we can get. And I really, really, really do want to pay that person to ride for an entire year and learn. I'm so passionate about that and I truly, truly believe that we can make it happen. Okay, so please subscribe. It helps me and you so, so, so much to all of us reach our riding dreams.